Hi there, welcome along to the sweet spot. It's the Racing Post weekly golf show, your one-stop shop for hot takes and hot tips on all things golf. I'm Bruce Millington, he's Steve Palmer, and we've got the third major of the season to preview. The US Open starts at the Los Angeles Country Club on Thursday. Before then, we'll be looking back on what happened last weekend. Good weekend for the bookies, I think. A couple of very, very hard-to-find winners. Before that, though, Steve, just very briefly, and it will be brief because people want to know who you fancy for the US Open. Um, just before you and Jack came, or just after you and Jack came off air last week, of course, the, the uh, news broke that the PGA Tour, having been rowing and scrapping and hating Liv, have suddenly decided to jump into bed with them. Um, what are your thoughts on that, really? So obviously been loads and loads written and said about it. Um, what's your overriding thought? My overriding thought is I can't believe how few people knew about it. You know, there's genuine shock from from everyone in there. It seems like about three people knew about it. Incredibly well kept secret. And um, my other thought is that I can't believe how little people know about it now. You know, we're we're a week later. And still nobody knows whether Live Golf is going to continue, uh, whether they're going to be playing that next year. Um, uh, yeah, that nobody knows whether the players from Live are going to come back onto the PGA Tour. I mean, uh, yeah, it's just rumours abound, isn't it? There's just not yeah. enough clarity. Do you think in, in, the, in the week that's gone, they would have cemented all this? Um, but so, uh, yeah, it seems like it was a, maybe a bit of a rushed panic decision there's a there's, there's rumors that you know john rahm was going to going to switch to live and that's where they hit the panic button and 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 and, and uh, sign this 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 declaration of union but yeah the details there's so many details to thrash out and and perhaps fines for the the people who left for live and then i've heard rumors that those fines may go to the people who stayed loyal to the pj sort but who knows i certainly don't well, Matt Fitzpatrick said this week that only about four people in the world seem to know what's happening. And since you and I are not one of those four people, let's move on. Yeah. We'll quickly look back on last week because it was one for the bookies, as I say. Um, Nick Taylor, I mean, it's a brilliant finish. Dramatic scenes in Canada. Uh, finally got the better of Tommy Fleetwood in a playoff with an outrageously long eagle putt on 18. Um you described him as a Canadian plodder in the previous. So, okay. and and and, he, and he's bought, sorry, I'm not, I don't want to kick a man when he's down or anything like that. But I was just simply trying to say that he was badly out of form. So, although he went up to 60, 61, not an easy one to find. But he played well, held it together, didn't he? So, fair play. Well, I mean, if you've been living in a cave for three months, you could have had both winners last week. I mean, you're right. Yeah, the bookies would have been happy with those results, but. Yeah, three months ago, Dale Whitnell was playing superbly. And then, um, you know, you would have been tempted at the fancy prices for the Scandinavian mixed if you just emerged from a cave. And then Nick Taylor was, you know, was runner up in the, the, the Phoenix Open um, and he was playing great. But, but both of those guys more recently had been missing cuts and you know, were, were difficult to trust. But, um, yeah, I mean, I thought it was a brilliant tournament. The Canadian Open just great, wasn't it? comes up. Yeah, I, I, I would have loved to have been a neutral, you know, I mean, I've got... Got a couple of places. You know, Eric Cole finished sixth and um, you know, Justin Rose finished uh, eighth. But um, yeah, if I was watching that tournament as a neutral, I would have thoroughly enjoyed it because, you know, ev everyone, yeah, we all wanted a Canuck to win, didn't we? I mean, yeah. I mean obviously, Tommy, yeah, Tommy Fleet would have lots of viewers that would have liked to have seen Tommy Fleet with one for obvious reasons. But um, he was a good sport as well at the end, wasn't he? He was you a know? great sport. He, he always is a good sport, isn't he? Is, he? Isn't he? Yeah, um, yeah, he, would, he, yeah he, he would have been heartbroken. Yeah, it's another near miss on the PGA Tour. But yeah, he, he, as you say, he's, he's, he's very, very measured, isn't he? Um, and of course, we had the hilarious uh, Adam Hadwin incident, didn't we? Oh, we seen that. Man. Go on to Twitter and see that. So basically, you know what it's like when, when a... a um, a player from one of the sort of less established golfing nations wins. His compatriots always wait by the green, don't they, and leg it on, spray him in champagne. And Hadwin went to do that and got absolutely T-boned by this massive burly security guard. But very impressively, kept managed to keep the champagne spillage to a minimum, I thought. That was good. But it was, <laughs> I, I it was mean, bad, wasn't it? I thought that was literally the funniest thing I've ever seen. I mean, I I, I, I couldn't I couldn't stop laughing. I mean, you, yeah, the, the security guys a magnificent rugby tackle, wasn't it? Yeah. And then he held he was so he was proud as punch after he'd done it because he held his arm as if he's like doing his job. He's looking for his colleagues, and then the colleagues come over and say, "No, that's that's Adam Hadwin." But yeah, I suppose he was wearing a hoodie. He looked uh, he didn't look like a golfer, did he? he, was, he, was, no, he was, yeah. it was good, um, wasn't it? Good yeah, time. I mean, I, I honestly, I laughed for half an hour at that. that oh, I just brilliant. couldn't stop laughing. I, 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 you see so many videos these days, don't you, on the <laughs> social media? <Yeah. laughs> and that, it, it, I think in the last few days, you had the full spectrum because you had 
that's the funniest thing that's ever been seen. And then you had the fella getting eaten by the shark. Do you the, the least funny thing I've ever I've seen? I've not seen not... that. Oh, blimey. Like... Well, maybe you shouldn't bother if you ever want to go back in the sea. I mean, I, I'm, I'm never going back in the sea. Yeah, you had Adam Adwin, the funniest thing ever, and then the least funny thing ever. Yeah, in, in Egypt, a, a, a Russian lad, only 23, got eaten by a shark. And some, what, and there's a video of it? Yeah, some woman's filming it on the oh. um, on the beach. Yeah, I think uh, uh, she would have been better help trying to get the boat to help him, but the boat was too late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry, I've, I've brought, the, brought the mood down there. But um, yeah, better, yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 there's all sorts of content out there, isn't there? There certainly is, yeah. Um, uh, so um, Dale Whitnell... What I was very impressed by there, he he opened up that enormous um, 36 hole lead and defended it valiantly. I thought there was a couple of times we thought he might come back to the field, but he, he really held it together. It must be quite difficult, that mustn't it, Dave, uh, Steve? Because you've got, you know, not just when you're on the golf course, but you've got the fretting in between rounds and the pressure that must build up. So yeah. fair play to him for holding on there. And if you backed him at 150 to one, what's what a result for you? Yeah, I mean, it meant an awful lot to him. You know, he broke down in the interview afterwards. He thanked, he thanked his, his dog, didn't so he? Most people say... thank God, but he thanked dog, which is quite unusual. Yeah, <laughs> yes, uh, the reverse spelling, isn't it? Yeah, Ooh. maybe he got maybe he got muddled up and was so overcome he wanted to thank God, but uh, and, uh, <laughs> thanking a dog. But uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, you got to be pleased with Dale Whitney, wouldn't you? But uh, as I say, uh, um, you know, three months ago he was in good form, and then he just went went. Yeah, form is temporary, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, it's just. Yeah, ability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had the ability to win the Scandinavian mix quite, quite clearly. Uh, Yannick Paul got within three, didn't he? Um, at one stage to put the willies up him. But you, you're right, he responded well. So yeah, yeah, we're pleased for Dale. I think he's from your neck of the woods, isn't he? Oh, is um, he? I didn't yeah, know. yeah, yeah. You might sure. bump into Dale in the pub at the, at the weekend. But um, okay. yeah, great tournaments. Nick, yeah, two two really nice chaps. One here, Nick Taylor, mm. yeah, sort of quiet, unassuming, pleasant chap. And yeah, yeah, when that one in from a different zip code as they say yeah. he didn't know what to do did he, he just he just sort of stared for a bit i mean it was there was a pause where he thought blimmin heck is i've actually done it and also on that subject i almost hit his caddy in a delayed fashion because his caddy went to sort of give him a regulation high five to start with and then upgraded it to the full kind of hug yeah. and race yeah so and then race. the caddy had to switch his attention to the to the security guard didn't he because he, he was <laughs> the the bad <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i just i'm so happy that happened because every time i'm feeling glum i'll just watch that and it'll perk me up what i when i feel glum i watch um a youtube video of the hibs fans singing sunshine on leaf have oh, you ever okay. seen that yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, Maybe it's the most uplifting thing. So you should you should have that in your locker, mate. It's really nice. And also the moment when Ian Wright recognises his old PE teacher. That's nice. <laughs> there's, there's, there's bits out something. there. I go to them. I go to them like Valium just to keep me calm and, and get me back up. Yeah, it's, yeah, lovely. it's probably better than Valium because Valium could have some nasty side effects, wouldn't it? Mm. Mm. Right. Are we done with our recap? I think we are. Yeah, yeah. Let's crack on. We've got a major on our horizons. We certainly do that. And that horizon is very much this Thursday, like I say, US Open at the Los Angeles Country Club. Never hosted the tournament before. Um, tell us all about LA Country Club. We've got for, uh, what I will say, Steve, we've got slight conflicting report reports. I mean, because I got a message from someone who, who lives in the LA area and they said, look, the the, the rough that they Lionel Richie, was it Lionel Richie? No, Ritchie? it wasn't Lionel Richie. No, no, no. Um it, he was basically saying that they brought they planted loads of rough expecting it to be absolutely brutal but that it wasn't and, th and this guy reckon minus 20 was going to win it but since then all i've seen is videos of people dropping golf balls in and then disappearing into what looks like almost sludge and all sorts of predictions of you know level par and the usual kind of very harsh us open so what's your what are your course thoughts on what you've gleaned well, it's Bermuda rough, isn't it? We haven't had a US Open with Bermuda rough since 2005 at Pinehurst. So it can be very, very thick, tangly stuff. But I think your mate might be more onto it than... Uh, than yeah, I saw Patrick Carr, they say he thinks level par will win. And, the, you know, the USGA traditionally like level par to win. But no, I think we're going to get low scoring course. Um, you know, we got, we're at the North Course, Los Angeles Country Club, California IA, 7,423 yards, par 70 only three par fives, five par threes, a George Thomas Jr. design. Uh, the Los Angeles Open was at this venue many moons ago. 1940 was the last one. But then it just uh, became a private members club, which shut its gates to outsiders. You know, very exclusive this. Only the super wealthy were allowed to, to, to play in this, uh, this, uh, this course. And the members didn't want any tournaments at their club. They actually voted against the U.S. Open 
come in there. Um, but recently there was a leadership change um, and the new club chiefs much more welcoming to, to outsiders. Jill Hans was brought in to redesign the course in 2010. Uh, then we have the 2013 Pac-12 Championship there, a prestigious amateur tournament, and then the 2017 Walker Cup. So tournament golf is now being played there. And uh, and finally, the members have, uh, have, have been convinced to let the US Open you know, run wild on their hallowed turf. But there's going to be conditions. I'm, I'd like to make this point. Yeah, you're oh, right. Great. It's a fascinating week for, for many reasons, uh, but the, the conditions are, you know, due to this, you, 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 you presume you've been to Los Angeles as a jet setter, yeah. haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is in the heart of Beverly Hills, and you know, it's, there's going to be logistical issues, but I think that the members didn't want this uh, to turn into a traditional US Open with you know, hundreds of millions of pa patrons in there. So basically, only 22,000 tickets have been sold to spectators for each day of, of action. That is the lowest I can ever remember for, for a US Open. 14,000 of those tickets are for corporate hospitality. So, yeah, mm -hmm. they'll just be sitting there, um, you know, coughing their, coughing their champagne and, and not really getting hugely involved. So you're only going to have 8,000 spectators, you know, general public roaming the, roaming the fairways each day. I think it's going to be one of the quietest US Opens in history. Mm -hmm. um, you know, bear in mind the Masters, traditionally the more reserved one, um, you know, quiet Augusta, there's 40,000 a day allowed in, in for the Masters. So, you know, almost half um, for this one. So It'd be almost yeah. like a COVID tournament, won't it? I think it's going to be mm. a very strange atmosphere. And, you know, factor it into your calculations. You know, it, it won't the weather's feel nice, like... though, isn't it? Oh, the weather's amazing. Yeah, yeah, the weather's amazing. Uh, sunny and calm throughout, peaking at uh, 23C. You know, zero draw bias. You can bet with confidence there. Uh, every day is exactly the same. I, I think something like 12 under par might win. Um, uh, at least I think you probably have to get to 12 under par to have a chance, really, because the average fairway width is 43 yards. I well, mean, that's again, wide, isn't it? Yeah, for a US Open, it is, 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 is a sun heard of. So I think we're going to get a quiet US Open. We're going to get some, yeah, fairly easy tee shots. Yeah, there's loads of room off the tee. The, the rough hasn't grown as they would have liked. Yeah, you, know, you get the annual. Yeah, you, I, I know the videos you're referring to, but yeah, one of them is by the USGA. It seems they're trying to convince people that it's, it's still the same as a usual regime, but it's not. Yeah, the and you don't know how many tapes there's been, do you? They could have dropped it 50 times to get one to disappear. That's they? right. Yeah, the other 49 might be sitting up like a coconut. Mm. Um, but yeah, it, it looks fairly easy for a US Open. Mm. There, yeah, 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 yeah. but I think approach shots is the key. Steve, the greens, oh, approach are, shots. Yeah, yeah the, the green, the greens, the greens mm. are very thin. Actually, very thin greens. Well guarded, so you know, accurate iron play is the most important. That always seems to be the case these days. I can't remember a last tournament where that wasn't the key attribute. But, uh, <coughs> well, there you go. There you maybe go. that's the name of the game these days. And am I yeah. right in thinking there's like a monster par three that's sort of over 280 yards? You are right in thinking that, yeah, oh. yeah, 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 yeah. There's going to need a lot of uh, going to need a lot of tool to go to get that one in you. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. The path, the par threes are going to be absolutely crucial this week yeah they're, they're, they're they vary in distance dramatically you've got the shortest par three in history um which tiger woods said is the hardest one <laughs> i mean they, they asked tiger woods about it. it's 112 yards i think um wow. but he, he says if you miss the green you've got no chance of making par so oh. he says that's the hardest one um so um yeah fascinating fascinating wow fascinating i'm looking thing. forward to it you've whetted my appetite i'll i'll spin through the betting um and i'll before i <clears throat> before i read the prices out I will stress the importance of shopping around, not just for the best prices and not just for most places, but you've got to look at the fraction on that. There was someone who said, um, you know, why can't you mention the sweet spot? I think it was a tournament of whatever the, it was the USPGA and they'd seen 12 places, but they didn't realize it was a sixth of the 12. So you must shop around because some firms are six to 12. There's a quarter of the five. There's a fifth, the eight, there's a fifth, the 12, there's a fifth, the 10. It's really important. If you notice the number of places, you also need to notice the fraction. It's very important. So with that in mind, I'm going to read out um, some prices that are based on a quarter of the five. So these should be roughly the best prices in the marketplace. Are you sure, sir? Are you sure, sir? I'm not I think sure. That might be, no, all right. no, I think that's 58. 58, I'm, I'm guessing. I, I, I'm oh, sorry, no, I might no, have mismerged no. you, but. You have, yeah, thanks. Oh, yeah, okay. quarter, quarter of the five. You pick the winners. I'll do this one. Okay. <laughs> Um, <laughs> quarter of the five, Scotty Scheffler, eight to one, John Rahm, 11 to one, Brooks Kutka, 14 to one, Rory McIlroy, 16, Cantley, 20, Hovland, 20, Chauvelet, 25, Spieth, 25, Matt Fitzpatrick, 33, Cam Smith, 33, Max Homer, 33, Colin Morikawa, 33, 
Tyrrell Hatton, 40, Tony Finnow, 40, Justin Thomas, 40, Dustin Johnson, 40, Jason Day, 40, Justin Rose, 40, and it's 50 bars. So that gives you a taste of it. All the good ones are there. Steve, I know that you, um, you've you de decided to rest the larynx last week. If you've got four selections, I want to hear it nice and loud. If you've got another number, what is it? It's five. Five selections. <laughs> right then. Who do you think will be lifting the trophy on Sunday? I think Maximus Homo will be lifting the trophy. Uh, 28 to 1 getting eight each way places is, is my tactic. A local lad who seems sure to be inspired by his surroundings. Homo was born in Los Angeles County and he excelled at Los Angeles Country Club in that 2013 Pac-12 championship I mentioned. He opened with a course record 61. He went on to win the tournament by five shots. A decade later, here he is back at LACC as world number seven. He's got all the tools required to rip this layout to shreds again. He's one of the best iron players in the world. Accurate approaches seems the key to success this week. His short game is fantastic as well. He's a magnificent putter. Driving is probably the weakest aspect of his game. The fairways are generous at this track, as mentioned. The rough is nothing to worry about. And he's got firm, fast conditions. You know, Homer can hit three wood on plenty of holes this week with, with, with no problemo. Four of his six PGA Tour victories have come in California. He relishes performing in, in his home state. His first win in California came 20 minutes down the road from LACC. You know, Riviera Country Club is only 20 minutes down the road. He was runner up to John Rahm in, in the Genesis this year. He's ready to contend in major championships. He hasn't done it before, but he's never been as good as he is now. You know, he's a late bloomer. He's 32. He won the Farmers Insurance Open in January. That's another U.S. Open venue in, in, in California, Torrey Pines. He showed a huge amount of courage in that. He was sixth in the Players' Championship in March, ninth in Colonial last time out. Nice little warm up. And his sister, I think, has helped him. I mean, at the time mm. when I saw. Yeah, because I saw that he was um, skipping the memorial. Um, to, to attend his sister's wedding. And I was a bit angry with his sister at that stage. I thought, oh, yeah, a bit, uh, yeah it's a designated elevated event. Couldn't she have uh, yeah. fit, it, you know, fit it around his schedule a bit? But I think his sister's been very clever and, um, you know, he realised he needed to freshen up for the US Open, booked it in for the memorial and, and has helped him because you know, he's, he's fresh for the fight this week. You know, US Open mentally draining, um, Homer's, Homer's fresh for the fight. And the, and, the, and the icing on the cake is his par three performance statistics. He's second on the PJ Tour for par three performance. I think those five par threes are going to be going to be pivotal and, and Homer's ready for them. Wow. So it was Dale Whitnell's dog last week. It could be Max Homer's sister this week that holds the key to victory. OK, if it's not Homer, who could be the man? I think Victor Hovland at 16 to one is very fair. You know, like Homer, one on a difficult golf course this year. He was having a solid but winless season. Then last time out, held his nerve spectacularly at Murfield Village to, to win the Memorial. You know, everyone was struggling on that on that back nine. He was three under par for the back nine. An incredible Sunday performance. Um, yeah, that was a firm, fast track, like the one he's going to get this week. His ball striking is, you know, is, 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 is so impressive, so solid. He made his US Open debut in California 2019 as an amateur finished 12th at Pebble Beach um, and recently yeah recently he's been knocking on that door of a, 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 you know, becoming a major champion he was fourth in the Open at St Andrews last summer seventh in the Masters in April second in the US PGA last month you yeah, know there was no disgrace in defeat was there he, he gave Brooks Cooker a real a real battle at Oak Hill and it was just that one shot on the 70th hole which hit the the lip of the fairway bunker until that moment he was giving Cooker a, a real a real fight um, and then bounced back at Memorial I mean it was a I think Hovland at the age of 25 is ready to win majors and his California record is good. Second at Torrey Pines in the 2021 Farmers. Riviera form, you know, got to study Riviera form this week. They're so close and there's similarities between the two tracks. His form figures are 5 4 at Riviera. Uh, and, and one final thought for you. Six of the last seven US Opens have been won by a major maiden. You know, I, Ooh, think, I think Homer and Hovland are you know, likely lads to play that role. I like that. I wonder if the bookmakers do a top golfer beginning with HO category. That'd be quite <sighs> impressive, wouldn't it? It would, it would, it would. I hope they do. Who else would be in that? It's a bloody good question. <laughs> <laughs> You've got quite enough on your plate this week without worrying about my silly questions. <laughs> I'm just right. put off because I, I've, I've got a slightly different design on the Skype today and, 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 and our producer, Will, is down as WC. It's got his initials there, so uh, it's just Why put me that? off a little bit. I just Why? water, you know, just reminding me I might need to go to the water closet in a minute. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I wish I had mentioned that now, but let's move on. <laughs> Interesting insight, your mind. Right, where does Ricky Fowler fit into the staking plan? 
<laughs> he's not in the staking plan and obviously i'm going to be devastated oh, wow. if he wins yeah yeah I, I just i think he's got a chance but i just what happened at memorial when he bogeyed the final three holes on saturday bogeyed the final three holes on that was, on it, Sunday. was it I just, well, that's no, the no, final that's... straw ricky i've had enough of you go on off you go that's what you said is it I just felt like um, if he, if it, in a regulation event like that, if he couldn't hold it together on those closing holes uh, in a big, you know, in a, in a major like this one, maybe it'd be more difficult. I don't know. I was, I was tempted again. I was tempted again, but no, he's not in the staking plan. Okay, who is? Siwoo Kim, my lord, sixty-six to one, who proved when winning the Players Championship at the age of twenty-one that uh, he could beat elite fields. You know, he, 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 he can win massive events. He won at Sawgrass by three shots. He's always had bundles of courage. We've seen that also in the President's Cup. He's a special character. He's a, he's a madcap Korean, but he's uh, he's gifted. He's good enough to win majors. In the Sony what does he Open, do that's madcap? Loads of things. I mean, he, he, he oh. obviously he's, 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 he's snapped his putter at Augusta. He's the only player in the world who's ever had a fit of peak at Augusta. You can't do that at the Cathedral of Pines, but Seawood doesn't play by the rules. He was putting with a three-wood at Augusta. He, you know, last year, for you know, just final example, he, um, he had a fit of peak on one tee, Dropped the ball, didn't bother teeing it up, and just hit driver off the deck. Um, when he was back, yeah, when he was in contention, Class. you know, he, he, he's a, he's headstrong, <laughs> he's headstrong, but um, a little bit crazy. Uh, in the Sony Open five months ago, carded back to back weekend rounds of 64 to win his fourth PGA Tour title. And he loves playing in California. He won on the Corn Ferry Tour in California in 2015. Then on the PGA Tour in 2021, he won the American Express. You might remember that one because we were on him and mm. he repelled, repelled Patrick Cartley. He loves the Golden State. He was third in the 2019 Genesis at Riviera. And his recent form is really encouraging. Second in the Byron Nelson a month ago. Fourth in the Memorial last time out. So, see with Kim, my lord. Oh, I like that, Steve. I like that. Are you happy with my uh, nodding frequency, by the yeah, way? Yeah, I'm noticing a bit more nodding. Last time we were on, I, I, you, you, you lambasted me for not nodding enough. So I'm You are being very generous, not only with your nodding, but with your facial expressions. I've seen some <laughs> smiles. Um, no, I couldn't be more encouraged. Okay, mate. Jolly good. Right then. Well, in that case, I hope that spurs you on to do a great delivery of your fourth selection. Min Woo Lee, my lord. We got woo woos everywhere. Min Woo Lee is 100 to 1. This is a man who relishes major competition. He was 14th on his Masters debut, 27th on his US Open debut, 21st in the Open at St. Andrews last summer, 18th in the USPJ last month. Brings his best to the majors. He's a class act. He'd be licking his lips at this firm, fast LACC, as everyone likes to call it. Uh, the Aussies have grown up on first, fast, firm terrain. Um, and Mimu is a master of that stinger shot. You must have seen Mimu at the stinger mm, shot. He can yeah. hit a long line miles low miles or like a you know runway like fairways like this i think that's a great shot for it to have in your locker this week he's also got magic touch around the greens here everyone's going to be missing greens this week mimu is one of the best in the world around the greens and i think he's ready to win an elite event like this you saw that in the, the players championship in march was a huge stepping stone for me played in the final two ball with scotty scheffler ended up finishing sixth um i just think that proved that mimu is elite He's now got a PJ Tour card in his pocket as well. He's more relaxed now than, than ever. He, he got special temporary membership. Um, you know, I think he's going to be on the PJ Tour forever. I think it's entirely feasible. He wins his first major on Sunday. Wow. So we've got four tips and you're already tipped. We've got one more tips coming. You're already tipping 100 to one shot. So is, is this even more exotic? Don't tell me who it is yet. I want to try and get Oh, OK. It. Have, have, a little, have a little thought because I've got that itchy nose Tell again. me the price. Tell um, me the price and then I'll, I'll ruminate while you're scratching your nose. 250 to one. I'm going to go for the biggest the biggest nose scratch in history. OK. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Any guesses? No, I was <laughs> captivated by that. <laughs> it's so uh, sweaty in the shed. It, is, only... it, is it someone you've you've tipped before on the show? Oh yeah. And we and what's the nationality? His nationality is American, Californian. Um, not Tom Hoagie. No, it's not Tom Hoagie. Um, no, I don't know. Go on, who is it? Put me out of my misery. Justin, sir. Oh, yeah, Justin, yeah, yeah. sir. Yeah, I'm top and tailing my attack with Californians. You know, home is my main hope. But Justin, sir, one hell of a player. Couldn't believe 251 was up for grabs. You know, he was a college star at the University of Southern California, which is in Los Angeles. He was world number one amateur for 26 ruddy weeks. You know, this is he's yeah. always destined to be a superstar. And it is, it is going to happen. You know, injuries stopped him making a smooth transition 
from the amateur game to the pro ranks, but he's making a serious impact now. He turned 26 yesterday. He's got the world at his feet. He was the Corn Ferry Tour Player of the Year last season. You know, super consistent campaign, ended with the Corn Ferry Tour Championship victory. And then onto the PGA Tour, 20th in the Farmers Insurance Open in January, 5th in the Honda Classic, 6th in the Players' Championship. More recently, 26th in the US PGA, 16th at Colonial. Really dangerous outsider. And if, if our hunch... I think you agree with me. This is going to be a low score in US Open. Mm. Yeah, if that comes true, I, yeah, I want some top-notch putters on my side. Homer's a top-notch putter. Sir is an absolutely dynamite putter. Um, yeah, he uses a uses a really old putter that he's had since his uh, school days, a Nike wow. putter that they don't even make anymore. He's had to buy some off eBay. To, but he, he uses that tool really effectively. And, um, you yeah, know, he can he'll love a low-scoring event. Um yeah, yeah, 251. Come on, absolute respect. Brilliant. Oh, I love all that, Steve. That's a really nice, <sighs> uh, really nice odds package. As you say, <laughs> I'm glad you got my package. If you get the racing post tomorrow, you will get Steve's comments on every single player. So that is an essential purchase. There's loads more in there, all the prices, all the stats, Steve's thoughts, not just on the outright, but all the derivative markets, loads in there. It's a really great package. So I, I don't want to give all the, that great content away for free, but should ask about the big two in the market who are Rahm and Scheffler. First question, who do you prefer out of those two? Oh, much prefer Rahm. Much prefer Rahm. Mm. A prolific winner in California. Um, his maiden PGA Tour title came in California. He's won a US Open in California you know, two years ago. Uh, he won at Riviera in February. He was 10th in that Pac-12 um amateur event in, in, in i mentioned that, that homer won so he has got some course experience which not many people have um it's very hard to get away from ram i think it's just i think yeah you know, it's, it's a very flimsy reason for opposing him but i mean the price is obviously yeah, i don't want to back anyone's single figures it feels like a very wide open major this um particularly if the course plays as easy as as expected so um I don't want to back anyone at single figures, but there's also a, a difficult media conference for him to negotiate because you know, these rumors. He's going to be are, asked if he was going to flip. Well, that's that. Rumors are abound that, that mm. the reason that the PGA Tour did this is because Ram was about to sign for Live. So he's got some. And as you say, questions. Steve, what happened at the start of uh, sorry, as you say at the start of the show, what's happened since suggests that they did just have to hop into bed with them and didn't think about the ramifications. Who's going to pay the gas bill? Uh, you know, great, they've, great, they've yeah. formed this union, haven't they? But they haven't really thought it through. So perhaps it was that, yeah. that triggered it because there was, yeah. you know, as you say, it was a totally out of the blue. There was it was a nobody saw it coming. So perhaps it was something like that. And therefore, there will be a bit of scrutiny on Ram. What about Scheffler? Yeah, they haven't thought about the ramifications. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He, he's not for me. That amazing ball striking. Yeah, he's being backed. He's being well. He's a well supported favourite now. Um, but yeah, the putting is rubbish. But the reason he's getting punted so 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 heavily now, I think, is because he, he's, he's put a new putter in the bag. Yeah, he, people have been mm. wondering for weeks why he's not switching putters. You know, most players when they go into a putting slum just straight on. You know, Dustin Johnson goes through ten putters a day. Um, he's got a new one in the bag this week. So maybe if if, if he clicks with that putter, then you know, he takes advantage of the ball striking. He's a big runner, but he's not got a great record in California. IA. You know, the, you know, some players much more comfortable. On the west coast so much much comfortable on the east coast and why elsewhere. is that um, i mean you know geographically it shouldn't matter it's a golf course but there are actual practical reasons aren't they based there are, on the there actual are. sort of terrain they're playing on isn't it very much so john and and, and john Rahm much better than the scottish Sheffield in california brooks cooker must mention him because he's you know he's, he's buying for the major you know, he's, 11, he's, like, he's only 11 to 1 i mean he's never done anything in california he's a florida man through and through I can live without 11 to 1 Cook. Uh, you know, McElroy 12 to 1. I can definitely live without that. I mean, he, yeah, that's speaking of Jack last week. I think he's in a Malay. I mean, that's two Sundays mm. in a row. He was really disappointed at Memorial Sunday, Canadian Open. I mean, he's, again, faded from the ball very quickly. I think. It's 12 years since he won this, Steve. All his best form is in the dim and distant, isn't it, really? I think McElroy's in a Malay. I don't think I'll be back in McElroy until he wins um, mm. because I think that's the only way out of the Malay. Uh, and then you just get, you, then you get to your, you, you, you can't lay and your chevalets. I mean, they're both Californians, both be well back this week. I mean, can't lay hugely tempting, but I must mention the one thing that put me off him was the par three performance stats. It mentioned the five par threes, and he's, he's tailed off in par, par three performance, which is quite a curious stat. Um, and if they but, have yeah, really he, hard par threes, which they seem to be, then yeah, ooh, and he, he loves he loves Riviera. He's got he's got a lot going from can't lay, but um, you can't back them all, can you? You certainly can't, mate. You really can't. Do you want free golf bets? Head over to racingpost.com forward slash free bets now 
to claim all of the best offers from your favorite bookmakers. Um, tell us, have you got anything on the specials? I know there'll obviously be a full array of derivative tips. Have you got anything for us now? You didn't seem enthused when you did the USPJ about the special tips, so I haven't prepared for that. For, I'm prepared no, I, I wasn't unenthused at all. No, I was yeah, well, I, I, I'm hoping you're unenthused now because I haven't got any, got any for you. <laughs> <All right. laughs> but but okay. I, I will have some. I will have some on online at some point later today in Racing Post uh, newspaper okay, tomorrow. Right. So uh, yeah, yeah. Have yeah, you got anything to add on, on this right. tournament? Uh, not sure I have. I mean, I can I can see why a lot of people will back Xander Shafali at twenty to one. Another tempting one. His U.S. Open record is amazing. Um, you know, he's a San Diego man. I've, I've been learning a lot about California. Apparently, San Diego and and Los Angeles are very different. Uh, very different vibes. You know, San Diego are a very quiet, sleepy place, and Los Angeles like you know, boom, 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 boom. You know, it's close to Hollywood, isn't it? Yeah, you know, Beverly Hills, mm, Hollywood. Yeah, but does that um, really matter? There aren't. Well, I, 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 I just course. don't know whether it's a golf course, isn't it? I always look for like home advantage. I don't know whether Shafali is going to turn up feeling like he's at home game. He's from the different sort of vibe of San Diego. Oh, who knows? Um, yeah. they're, 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 this is a wide open golf tournament. Let's be let's be perfectly fr fully yeah. frank about it. Um, there's many players you can make a good case for. I mean, we haven't mentioned Colin Morikawa, who was my original fancy at the start of the year. I mean, if he hadn't have picked up that back injury at Memorial, you know, he pulled out of the Memorial with back spasms when banging contention. So those back spasms would have been ruddy serious. Um, so he, he, he almost becomes unbackable, if you pardon the pun, um, mm -hmm. for this on the basis of fitness concerns. But, I mean, he knows Los Angeles Country Club better than anyone in the field. He, he starred in that Walker Cup there in 2017, you know, maximum points. So, um, yeah, Morikara does, certainly deserves a ruddy mention at the very least. OK, mate, well, you just got one. Anyone else you want to mention yeah. before we wrap? David Horsey? See, David Horsey's in the field, <laughs> yeah, he's in. There's he's a few in. sort of PGA Tour favorites over there isn't it it just yeah. shows how open the u.s open isn't it you can get in it if you play well at the right times and the right qualifiers and uh yeah good luck to david horsey it would be a dry in the house if he if absolutely he won this. not and how's your pecker are you in good spirits I, I know last week you seemed a little bit glum you had um you had some uh, gout issues didn't you oh yeah yeah i mean it's, it's a big test for me this year i'm at on day eight of no alcohol you know doctor's orders no alcohol oh, day right. eight um yeah there, there, there no side effects actually yeah, no side no no serious side effects um <laughs> so <I'm, laughs> i don't know I, I don't know i mean this itchy nose is back i don't know whether that's a side effect I mean, uh, great, that's great, that's great. surely the pollen is now i mean it, I, I didn't get hay food till i was about 50 and i'm 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 oh. my eyes are streaming it's off there's yeah, pollen bombs apparently at the moment you used to be a naysayer, didn't you? I remember back in the Canary Wharf days, you used to mock people who said they had hay fever and say it I didn't, didn't mock exist. Them. I didn't. No, 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 no. no. That was Paul Keeley. Uh, no, that wasn't Paul me. Right. Uh, no, yeah, but I, I mean, if the pollen bombs are, are causing havoc. They really are. Yeah, so that's that's probably good, is that. Yeah, but I, I'm taking pills that are like massive, great big rocks to get the get the gout out the toes. So uh, yeah, I must admit, I'm looking forward to it to a drink. But uh, I've got I need the toe to go down first. So does that mean we still can't arrange golf? Because I asked you if you wanted to play golf last week. You know, I can't. I got gout. I got very. Well, yeah, I'm not not moving. Rebuffed. Well, I'm not, yeah, I'm sorry I rebuffed you, but yeah, you know, I, I can't I can't walk very well at the moment. So uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure I'm sure I come through it. Don't you? I, 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 yeah, I bounce back, but uh, yeah, man. just um, yeah, teetotal and and, and focused on uh, LACC. Okay, well, hopefully you're enjoying the lovely weather as well and getting down to the beach occasionally. So, uh, yeah, that's all good. Right, we're, it's a wrap then, isn't it? Or should we just reiterate your five fancies for the US Open? Max Homer, Victor Hovland, Siwoo Kim, my lord, Minwoo Lee, Justin Su. And the winning score will be? Hmm, 13 under par. And who will be your favourite Sky Sports golf presenter or pundit on, on the week, do you think? Oh, um, I mean, surely if Butch is on the team, it's Butch, isn't it? Yeah, that's a tough question to answer because we don't know who's on the team, don't we? Yeah, yeah. I mean, but yeah, Butch, Butch, unless Ricky Fowler wins. If, if, if Ricky Fowler wins and Butch is commentating on it and I'm not on Ricky Fowler, I think I might... Um, I might struggle with that, but uh, yeah, yeah, we'll see who's on the team. I mean, we're going to have some late nights. We probably should mention that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Better. What time might they finish up? Because it's an eight-hour um, time difference, isn't it? Let's warn our viewers that uh, if, if if at all possible, get plenty of sleep in during the day. Um, I know that's never easy, but um, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to be in the wee small hours. Um, okay. I mean, it doesn't start until 2.45 p.m. On, um, on Thursday, and then 
yeah yeah every every night's going to be very late so it's okay. yeah it's a test of stamina well let's hope it's worth it enjoy it steve good luck with your tips uh good luck to everyone with your bets like i say when you shop around don't just look for best prices and most places but also keep an eye on that fraction because it can be anywhere between a quarter a sixth i've even seen a seventh Next week, we are back for the BMW International and the Travellers Championship. In the meantime, enjoy the sunshine and enjoy the golf. Have a fantastic week.